financial markets in India. Indian financial market is one of the oldest in the world and is considered to be the fastest growing and best among all the markets of the emerging economies. The history of Indian capital market dates back 200 years towards the end of the 18th century when India was under the rule of East India Company. The financial market in India today is more developed than many other sectors because it was organized long before. The securities exchanges of Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Kolkata were established as early as the 19th century. By the early 1960s, the total number of security exchanges in India rose to 8, including Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Kolkata apart from Madras, Kanpur, Delhi, Bangalore and Pune. Today there are 21 regional security exchanges in India in addition to the centralized NSE that is National Stock Exchange and OTCI that is over the counter exchange of India. However, the stock markets in India remain stagnant due to stringent controls on the market economy that allowed only a handful of monopolies to dominate their respective sectors. The corporate sector wasn't allowed into many industry segments which were dominated by the state controlled public sector resulting in stagnation of the economy right up to the early 1990s. Thereafter, when the Indian economy began liberalizing and the controls began to be dismantled or eased out, the securities markets witnessed a flurry of IPOs that were launched. These resulted in many new companies across different industry segments to come up with newer products and services. The role played by its securities market in assisting and fueling that growth with money rise within the economy. This was in marked contrast to the initial phase of growth in many of the fast growing economies of East Asia that witnessed huge doses of FDI that is foreign direct investment spurring growth in the initial days of market decontrol. During this phase in India, much of the organized sector has been affected by high growth as the financial market played an all-inclusive role in sustaining financial resource mobilization. Many PSUs, that is public sector undertakings, that decided to offload part of their equity were also helped by the well-organized securities market in India. The launch of NSE and OTCI during the mid-1990s by the government of India was meant to usher in an easier and more transparent form of trading in securities. The NSE was conceived as a market for trading in the securities of companies from the large scale sector and OTCI for those from the small scale sector. While the NSE has not just done well to grow and evolve into virtual backbone of capital markets in India, the OTCI struggle and is yet to show any sign of growth and development. The integration of IT into the capital market infrastructure has been particularly smooth in India due to the country's world class IT industry. This has pushed up the operational efficiency of Indian stock market to global standards and as a result the country has been able to capitalize on its high growth and attract foreign capital like never before. The regulating authority for capital markets in India is SEBI that is 
Securities and Exchange Board of India. SEBI came into prominence in the 1990s after the capital markets experienced some turbulence. It had to take drastic measures to plug many loopholes that were exploited by certain market forces to advance their vested interests. After this initial phase of struggle, SEBI has grown in strength as the regulator of India's capital markets and as one of the country's most important institutions. In this module, we will discuss about the working of Indian financial markets in details. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the structure and instruments of Indian money market, understand the defects of the Indian money market, to come across the meaning, instruments and intermediaries of the Indian capital market. Let us first start with major institutions of 90s in India. The launch of the NSC, National Stock Exchange and OTCEI over the counter exchange of India during the mid 1990s by the government of India was meant to usher in an easier and more transparent form of trading in securities. The NSE was conceived as the market for trading in the securities of companies from the large scale sector. OTCI was conceived as a market for trading in securities of companies from the small scale sector. After the initial phase of struggle, SEBI has grown in strength as a regulator of India's capital markets and as one of the country's most important institutions. In order to understand the importance of working of Indian financial markets, it is imperative to discuss about the components of the same. Indian financial markets can be divided into two components, money market and capital markets. The money market is a very important segment of the Indian financial system where short term monetary assets are dealt in to raise short term requirements of funds and to park short term surpluses. Following are the institutions which can take part in money market, public sector undertakings, mutual funds, insurance companies. The money market is a close substitute for money with a short term time span from overnight to an year. The Indian money market consists of both organized and unorganized segments. The unorganized sector consists of both the indigenous bankers and money lenders. Organized sector can be further divided into Reserve Bank of India, commercial banks, PO saving banks, non-banking companies and cooperatives. The commercial banks are further divided into scheduled and non-scheduled commercial banks. The non-scheduled commercial banks are further categorized into foreign banks and regional rural banks, whereas the scheduled commercial banks constitute public sector banks and Indian banks. The public sector banks are categorized into state banks and nationalized banks. Let us now discuss the money market instruments. The first instruments is government securities, which is issued by Reserve Bank of India on behalf of the government. There are different types of government securities, Dated securities issued at face value, zero coupon bonds issued at discount to the face value, partly paid stock issued at face value but paid in installments over a period, floating rate bonds issued at face value, bonds with call put option, a bond issued at call and put option, capital indexed bonds issued at face value. Call money or call deposits are that money which is lent on condition to repay on call. Banks borrow for a variety of reasons to maintain their cash reserve ratio, heavy payments, to maturity mismatch, etc. The main participants are banks and all India financial institutions as permitted by RBI. The Discount and Finance House of India, DFHI, enhance the activity of call money market and short term deposit market. Money at short notice is for a maturity up to 14 days. The main participants are banks and all India financial institutions as permitted by RBI. A minimum size of rupees 20 crores for each transaction was permitting the participation of the corporate in the call money market. The discount and finance house of India enhance the activity of call money market and short term deposit market. 
it allows lending and borrowing of funds the borrowers are essentially the banks it can operate outside the purview of the provision of the ceiling rates fixed by the indian banks association the different participants that lend fund in the market are like gic idbi and nabard etc the private mutual funds are also participating in the market the dfhi asset is the settlement between the lender and the borrower about the availability of funds and the amount needed and the exchanges it also provides an advice regarding the interest rates applicable to them here the call rates are more volatile as they are determined by the interactions of demand and supply of funds in the market which is based on maintenance of cash reserve ratios by the banks there are two call rates maintained in india that is interbank call rate and the lending rates of dfhi bills rediscounting scheme this is a money market scheme whereby banks may raise funds by issue of issuance from issuing notes in convenient lots and maturities matching the genuine trade bills discounted by them money market mutual funds provide safety liquidity and return mmmfs collect the small savings of a large number of savers and invest them in the capital market treasury bills are discounted securities issued at a discount face value as per the short term requirement of the government of india these are highly liquid money market instruments having a zero default risk bearing paper certificates of deposits it is a negotiable money market instrument whose minimum deposit should be rupees 1 lakh the maturity period should not be less than 15 days and not more than 1 year but it should not be less than 1 year and exceed 3 years for a financial institution intercorporate deposits intercorporate deposits are unsecured loan extended by one corporate to another as the cost of funds for a corporate is higher than a bank the rates in this market are higher than those in the other market interbank participation certificate interbank participation certificates are instruments issued by scheduled commercial banks only to raise funds or to deploy short term surplus this instrument is issued as per rbi guidelines for two purposes on risk sharing basis without risk sharing interbank participation without risk sharing can have tenure of 90 days only where the issuing bank lends to the borrowing bank at a rate of interest in case of risk sharing basis the lender bank shares losses with the borrowing banks by mutually determining the rate of interest the tenure may be for 90 to 180 days commercial bills these are the bills accepted by the buyer for goods and services on credit from the seller and which may be kept up to due date and in case by the seller or may be endorsed to a third party commercial papers this instrument is issued in the form of a promissory note or dematerialized form the cp is issued for a maturity period between a minimum of 7 days and a maximum up to 1 year from the date of issue in the denomination of rupees 5 lakh or multiples thereof gilt edged government securities are long dated securities and held by the rbi they have great demand by the banks to maintain the net demand and time liquidities ndtl position of the bank through its buying and selling repo market in this market the securities are sold by the holders to the investors with an agreement to repurchase them at a predetermined rate and date on the other hand under the reverse repo transactions securities are purchased with a simultaneous commitment to resell at a predetermined rate and date let us discuss some of the defects of the indian money market which are one shortage of funds in the money market the lack of banking habit inadequate banking facility less saving habit etc have created shortage of funds in the money market two lack of integration the indian money market is divided into two sectors organized and unorganized sector which are completely separated from each other rbi is fully effective in controlling the organized sector but it has very less control on the unorganized sector three lack of national interest rates 
In Indian money market, we have different types of interest rates. In the past, these created excess demand for credit and the RBI had to rely often on cash reserve ratio. Though the RBI has tried to bring rationality in interest rates, the situation in the Indian money market is still not effective. Four, inadequate banking facility. Even after the availability of a large number of banking facilities in India, still a large number of people living below the poverty line have very less saving habits and thus have less access to banking facility. Five, absence of organized bill market. This is due to many factors such as, first, relying more on cash transaction, second, cash credit of commercial bank, third, sellers limited use of bills, fourth, imposition of heavy stamp duty, fifth, absence of acceptance houses, etc. Six, seasonal stringency of money. During a part of the year, the interest rates become high due to the increasing demand for funds in the money market for the operation in the agricultural sector. Seven, existence of unorganized money market still prevails. As a result, the indigenous banker does not make any distinction between short-term and long-term finance and have no coordination with each other and have no link with other banking sectors. Thus, RBI has no control over these bankers. The major steps that had been taken in order to improve money market are relaxation from interest rate regulations, remitting the stamp duties, sector-specific refinance, introduction of repo, introducing money market mutual funds, setting the discount and finance house in India. Let us now discuss in detail the major drawback of money market. Indian money market is highly volatile. On the recommendation of Sukhumai Chakravarti committee, on the review of working of the monetary system and the Narasimha committee on the report on the working of the financial system in India 1991, RBI has initiated a series of reform in Indian money market. The measures undertaken are the following. Introducing new money market instrument. Many new money market instruments are introduced like commercial papers, certificates of deposits, 182 day treasury, 364 day treasury etc. The discount and finance house have also developed. These facilitate different short term borrowings to the different borrowers to collect fund as and when required to maintain their financial position. Relaxation from interest rate regulations. The all types of interest rates like lending as well as deposit rates of the banks and financial institutions are controlled and regulated by RBI. But gradually the interest rates of the bank loans are controlled by the market forces which result in decontrolled of it. Remitting the stamp duties. In August 1989, government remitted the stamp duty, but it is not effective till it discourages the cash credit system in favor of using the bill system. Sector specific refinance. Export credit refinance and general refinance are two re refinance schemes that are in operation in current financial system. The refinance is used by the central bank to control credit conditions and the liquidity positions in the system. But if the excessive funds supplied into the system do not result in any development, then it could be highly distorted one. Introduction of repo. This is used by the banks for short term liquidity through sale or purchase of debt instruments. It is an agreement to repurchase them at a predetermined rate and date between the RBI and commercial banks. Introducing money market mutual funds. The money market mutual funds were introduced in April 1991. The collection of the small savings invested generate short term avenues 
to the different investors. Setting the discount and finance house in India. The DFHI equilibrated the surplus of funds and the deficit amounts of the banks. The DFHI helps in lending and borrowing of funds to the different banks as well as financial institutions. Now we will discuss the second component of financial market that is capital market. The first instrument is equity shares. It represents the ownership capital. It is of several types. Authorized equity share capital. The maximum amount of share capital that a company can raise is its authorized share capital. It is that portion of the capital which is offered by the company to the investors. Subscribed capital. It is the part of issued capital which is subscribed by the investors. Paid up capital. It is the capital that is paid by the shareholders. The second component of capital market is preference shares. Preference shares has certain characters of equity share and debentures. It carries a fixed rate of interest. It has provincial right to get dividend in comparison to equity share. The preference shareholders can get cumulative dividends. That is, all unpaid dividends are payable. It does not carry any voting right. But if the preference shares are not paid for more than two years with respect of cumulative shares, the preference shareholders are entitled to vote. Debentures or bonds or notes. The debenture holders are long-term creditors. The debenture holders get fixed rate of interest and the principal amount is repaid at stipulated time. Three types of debentures are found presently in India as convertible debenture after 36 months, optionally convertible debenture within 36 months, compulsorily convertible within 18 months. Innovative debt or instrument. The debenture may be compulsorily optional or convertible. Call option gives the opportunity to the company to redeem the bonds prematurely. A warrant gives the right to subscribe the equity share at a certain period. The zero coupon bonds do not carry at any coupon rate and are sold at discount from their maturity value. The deep discount bond issued at discount over its face value are far less than the yield to maturity. Floating rate bonds are bonds whose interest rates are not fixed and it is the percentage point more than the benchmark rate. The benchmark rate is interest rate on treasury bills, bank rate and maximum rate on term deposit. Preference share has certain characters of equity share and debentures. It carries a fixed rate of interest. It has preferential right to get dividend in comparison to equity share. The preference shareholders can get cumulative dividends, that is, all unpaid dividends are payable. It does not carry any voting right, but if the preference shares are not paid for more than two years with respect of cumulative shares, the preference shareholders are entitled to vote. The debenture holders are long-term creditors. They get fixed rate of interest and the principal amount is repaid at stipulated time. Three types of debentures are found presently in India. Let us now differentiate between forward and future contract. Forward contract is the contract based on specified price to buy or sell at a specified future date of an asset. The buyer assumes a long position and agrees to buy at a specified future date at a specified price. Future contracts is an agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a certain time in the future at a certain price. In case of option contract, the parties get option to use their right to do something. They are of two types, call option and put option. It requires an upfront payment. The primary market intermediaries are 
merchant banker or lead managers, underwriter, debenture trustees, registrars and share transfer agents, bankers to issue. The banker to an issue means a scheduled bank carrying on all or any of the following activities. A. Acceptance of application and application money. B. Acceptance of allotment or call money. C. Refund of application money. D. Payment of dividend or interest warrant. The primary market deals with the sale of new securities. Now we will discuss about the intermediaries of primary market. First is a merchant banker or lead managers. Merchant bankers are body corporate who are engaged in issue of securities. It acts as manager or advisor or consultant to issuing company. A merchant banker requires compulsory registration under the regulation 3 of SEBI, that is merchant bankers. Regulation 1992. These activities mainly include determining the composition of capital structure, compliance with the procedural formalities, appointment of registration, listing of securities, arrangement of underwriting, selection of brokers and bankers, publicity and advertisement agent, private placement of securities, advisory services, etc. The merchant bankers are responsible to make all efforts to protect the interests of investors. The merchant banker has to exercise due diligence, high standards of integrity and dignity. The merchant bankers are also responsible in providing adequate information without misleading about the applicable regulations and guidelines. It is now mandatory for all public issues to be managed by public bankers functioning as the lead managers. Underwriter An underwriter may be an individual, broker, merchant banker, financial institutions or banks. The underwriting is an agreement between the issuing company and the assuring party through an agreement to take up shares or dementias or other securities to a specified extent in case public subscription does not amount to the expected level. Thus, in case any shortfall, it has to be made good by the underwriting arrangements by the underwriter as per the agreement. Debenture trustees. The issuing company has to make proper arrangements and comply with legal requirements for the investor. The company renders these services to the investors for a fee under an agreement executing as trust deed with trustee who are generally banks and financial institutions and file the same with registrar of companies. The main duties of debenture trustees are mainly possession of trust property in accordance with the trust deed, taking periodical report from the body corporate, enforce security of interest, protection of debenture holders, inspect books of account, inform SEBI if any breach of trust deed, etc. Registrars and share transfer agents. The registrars and share transfer agents are very important intermediaries in mobilizing new capital, maintaining records, deciding the basis of allotment, etc. for the investors. They are very useful in case of share transfer, sale, as it helps in liquidity to the investors of their investment. They also provide this service to the existing company. But this responsibility decreases as depository system comes into play. But unless and until the old system is completely eliminated and the shareholding totally switch over to dematerialized system, the share transfer agents will have to play their 
role. The registrar to an issue means any person appointed by the company or group of individuals carry out such activities on its behalf that is collecting applications, maintain records, determine the basis for allotment of security, finalizing the list from the same, process and dispatch of allotment letters etc. The share transfer agents means any person who maintain records of holders of securities on behalf of any body corporate. The deal in all matters connected with it like redemption, transfer of securities etc. It may be the department of a body corporate performing the activities at any time. The total number of holders of its securities issued exceed 1 lakh bankers to issue. The chapter 1 of SEBI bankers to an issue regulation 1994 deals with banker to an issue. The banker to an issue means a scheduled bank carrying on all or any of the following activities. A. Acceptance of applications and application money. B. Acceptance of allotment or call money. C. Refund of application money. D. Payment of dividend or interest warrant. The secondary market deals with the trading of securities initially offered. The secondary market intermediaries are Portfolio Manager. The Portfolio Manager is the person who under an arrangement with the client advises or directs the management and administration of such portfolio of securities. Stock Brokers. Stock Brokers are members of recognized stock exchanges who buy and sell or otherwise deal in securities. Custodian. Custodian of securities means any person who provides custodial services in relation to securities of a client or safekeeping of gold or gold related instrument. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. Money market is a market for short term funds. Money is raised and deployed for short term in this market. The money market is the close substitute for money with the short term up to one year. A minimum size of rupees 20 crore for each transaction was permitted in the participation of the corporate in the call money sector. The maturity period of certificates of deposit should not be less than 15 days and not more than one year. On the recommendation of the Sukhumai Chakravarti committee and the Narasimha committee, RBI initiated a series of reform in the Indian money market. To provide safety, liquidity and return, MMMFs are formed which collect the small savings of large number of savers and invest them in capital market. The capital market instrument can be classified into three categories as pure, hybrid and derivatives. Three types of debentures are found presently in India as convertible debentures after 36 months, optionally convertible debenture within 36 months and compulsory convertible within 18 months. The option contracts are of two types call option and put option. The capital market consists of two components the security markets and other forms of lending and borrowing.